they basically tell you that uh, they they were shipped wrecked here. Uh, they then they've actually come to like this place. Uh, there was a, a Captain Angus that was the 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 ship. And let's see, they were attacked by Ugox a couple of times, uh, and then of course, all of the ship, all of the ship was, uh, all of the supplies were taken out. Uh, they they were going to, in fact, this guy tells you that this Scott, he tells you that the Ugox, the Ugox weren't really aggressive, but the captain actually was aggressive towards them, so. You know, that's just how, it, unfortunately, it worked out. But they got everything off of the uh, the ship. In fact, the, the Ugox seemed like they they were seeing if everybody was okay at first. Uh, so yeah. So now there's a, a combination of so like these, uh, Brits and these Scots. All people running and, around in skirts. <laughs> yeah, there, there's some. Yeah, there's some. There's some Englishmen. There's some Scots. There's some. Uh, there's some Irishmen. And yeah, they have this 50-foot wall that they're uh, erecting uh, out of like these pieces of wood and timbers and whatever else that they can basically put together. So basically, Captain Angus, there was three ships in this uh, in this small fleet, and Captain Angus, you know, after they wanted to set up a colony here, Angus took the two remaining ships. And they headed north towards uh, Kiera, the Kieran Empire, and they wanted to find more, you know, more colonists to bring here, more supplies. But that's been several years now, and they haven't come back. So they 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 think that either a storm got them, or they or or the captain just decided, you know, Captain Angus just decided not to come back. So whatever you know, the people that they have left here, they're trying to, they're trying to, obviously they're trying to survive. So, and there's about, there's probably about forty, forty, fifty people here, children, a couple elderly, you know, stuff like that. But they have a, a nice little setup here. They've got all kinds of meat like hanging, and they've got like a little slaughterhouse, and but they don't have any storefronts or anything like that. They have a sort of like a storage shed where they keep a lot of things but yeah but they pay you the 2,000 pieces of eight they give it to you in a big old chest and that's pretty much just about all the money that they had left unfortunately because Captain Angus took the rest so I ask Aquarius does he believe we have enough stores to make it to Kiera uh, to make it to Kiera from Vittoria if you have enough yes. food yeah, do we have enough provisions to make it the the trip across the sea? It's only he says, Captain. It's only going to be maybe two days maximum to get to to Kiera. But he says, but with your, you know, but with your excellent uh, boating skills, we may be able to make it there in one day. With your expertise in catching the trade winds, sir. I kept catching the trade winds, sir. Yeah, you just you just cursed us. We're going to sink halfway there. <laughs> you just asked me a simple question, uh, <laughs> Captain, and I just gave you a simple answer. Shame <laughs> on you! Any, Fucking shipwrecking it now. <laughs> Sorry, God. Sorry. And for all the viewers, we'll be playing Pathfinder next week. Oh, uh, hey now. <laughs> so I, I'm sensing you do want the ship to go down there, Captain. <laughs> no, 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 no. Captain no. Chen's going to be down in the hole drilling holes all night long into the bottom of the <laughs> ship. <laughs> that, would, that would hurt my soul. That goes against my very spirit. Uh, uh, anybody need anything in Victoria? There's nothing to get. <laughs> they have really? Gilligan, <laughs> Professor, Marianne, if have, anybody? If they have fishing nuts, get some fishing nuts, but that's about all. Yeah, the only the only uh, nets they have are, are what they are using, basically. All right, well, I guess we set <laughs> sail to the north then. Anybody opposed? 
I mean, yeah, you were taking all this 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 heap of lumber. I mean, they've got access to it, but it it's like it's like the the Scotman says. He says we can't we can't take all the trees around us because it's just going to make us more vulnerable. You know what I mean? They're just going to open up more area for the Uggax to attack. And you know, since Captain Angus he attacked them first, they they don't even want to talk now. And sometimes they they do try to raid us, but they repel them back. And Captain Angus is in Kira. Well, supposedly... That's where he went to? That's where he was supposed to go. Yeah, he was going to try to find more colonists and also try to bring supplies back to Vittoria because they they just wanted to set up that colony there. Because, in fact, he says they wanted to call it New Scotland. But, you know, they can't do it... They can't call it New Scotland if nobody ever comes here. (laughs) So, (laughs) well, they can, but, yeah. Doesn't matter if nobody knows it. And now they have no more money at all. So, I mean, he can't send any kind of correspondence back with you to, to order more. So, but he says, if you do see Captain Angus, please let them know that, please let him know that we are still here and we are surviving. And he needs to get his ass back to us. Roger that. All right. Are we ready to head north, everybody? Aye, aye. <laughs> aye, aye. Aye, aye, Captain. That was a, that was a, that was a oh, we go, then. All right. Selling north to Kier. Boating roll. And I'll take, uh, I'll take some food off. Shen, you are successful again. So you want wings, or do you want just a standard meat and fruit? Standard meat and fruit. Wings, you can only have wings once a week. Mm, All right. It causes you to causes mm. you to have spend more time in the poop deck <laughs> because of the sauces, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Crispy Pete's ideal of, of hot wings is sketchy. Yeah, it's uh, it's fuego. He calls it fuego. <laughs> he got the recipe from a uh, from a Mexican. He said. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, let's draw a card to see if there's a storm. Hopefully there's not. Oh boy! And you guys are in the uh, in the Kieran Sea, so there is going to be an encounter. So let's uh, somebody roll a d20. I'll take the the first result. Oh. oh boy so all of a sudden as you guys are uh, as as it's probably about mid midday or so all of a sudden everything just gets dark I mean it's like something blotted out the sun and as you look up you see a giant bird to the likes of the size of a bird that you have never seen before. This this bird is as large as, as an ancient dragon. This thing is insane. So why don't you guys give me a uh, give me some common knowledge checks? And it would if you're you know just give me a uh, let's see I guess it would be is common knowledge skilled or or would common just be just a knowledge check. I would say just give me a knowledge check. Like a smart throw. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. <clears throat> yeah, zero. Zero know me. You guys know what it is. It is a it is a rock. It is a massive bird. This thing they and they're predators too. So I'm going to give it a... Uh, I'm going to give it a... Feet, come get this. <laughs> he, he says, hell no, Captain. That thing could tear us apart in one fell swoop. And yeah, this this thing looks like it probably could. So uh, I'm going to give it a percentage chance to attack the ship and, and actually see it. But this bird is big enough to where it literally... It blotches out the sun. 
So somebody, uh, Captain Shen or whoever wants to give me a percentage roll, right click on the on the D10 and click the percentage symbol and throw it into the chat. So I'm going to give it like a 25% chance to attack. All right, Chen. So this, yeah, I give it a 25% chance. You rolled a 60. So the rock, it doesn't even pay you any attention. It doesn't even really notice the ship. And it just flies right over. Crisis averted. <laughs> yeah, but I gave it a 25% chance to attack the ship. But that would have been cool to fire off the cannons and stuff, too. That would have been cool. And maneuvering yeah, moves cool. and stuff, yeah. But yeah, that's a thing, rock. That would, that would have would been have serious it. business. No pun intended, it would have rocked your world, probably. Okay, so let's do uh, one more day for... Uh, boating. We'll see if there's a uh, <laughs> there's a another encounter. Lucky you. All right, somebody drop me another D twenty into the the tower. Well, actually, out in the open. It don't need to be in the tower. Someone else can have a turn. Nothra, if you want to give us a roll of D twenty out there, just throw a D twenty in the chat. Are you kidding oh me? Nothray just you hit, like that. Nothray just hit the fucking lottery. Seriously, he just hit the lottery. So, uh, as you are probably within eye shot, as whoever is in the crow's nest yells "Land ho!" All of a sudden, you see that there is a a floating dinghy. And as, as he's yelling, land ho, whoever's in the crow's nest, I don't know who it is, whoever you put up there, they also yell that there's a dinghy right off of the, right off of the, uh, the front bow of the ship. And it doesn't look like, doesn't appear to be anybody in there either. I will, uh, I'll stop. All right, so you want to go ahead and, and get up to the to the dinghy? Sure. Yep, we gotta check out the dinghy. Yeah, so as you as you pull up side the dinghy, and of course, you know, all of the, the nets are dropped over and the long hooks on the pole, they, they, they grab this boat by the rings and stuff. And as you look down, there is there are there are two corpses. They're not corpses, they're skeletons. So, whoever has been in this boat, they, they obviously died of starvation, lack of water, and there were two of them in here. So, Noth Ray, why don't you do us the honor and give me another D20 roll? Because as you pull this, this dinghy up, you know, you can give them a proper burial at sea and all that other good stuff. <laughs> two extremes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, but that's still pretty cool. On one of the skeletons, Nothray, you find a ring. Oh my god. All right. Uh, what does it look like? Uh, it is a it's a beautiful ring. It's got all kinds of jewels in it. It looks to be worth at least Back with back in back in the homeland of Faerun, it looks like it would probably be worth about twelve hundred gold or something. Nice. Looks very expensive. Hey it has guys, I found this. A nice lot ring. of gems encrusted all the way around the ring. Oh my god, this ring is unbelievable. So you take the ring off of the, the finger and say, Hey, look, guys, I found this ring. Yep. Hey, guys, I found this ring. What do you guys think? <laughs> looks pretty pricey. It looks does. Nice. You to give it to me. Is it yeah. magical? <laughs> uh, it's something, because, Nothray, you need to give me a, a vigor roll. And, this, I, and, I, and I'm, I'm going to give you... Yeah, you need to give me a vigor roll. It says, this, it's a beautiful bejeweled ring... Looks like it's worth about twelve hundred, but it's cursed. It says the ring is cursed. However, uh, 
Anyone who touches it with bare flesh, flesh must make a vigor roll or die. That's pretty. Oh God! <laughs> that is that's pretty fucking hardcore, isn't it? If it says you must make a vigor roll or die, that's pretty intense. But your vigor roll was really nice, Nothray. So you felt some type of weird sensation, but you shook it off because you actually had a raise as well. So you don't die, but you figured, you know, with the time that you have the ring, and and there's no identification or anything like that in Savage Worlds like there is in in the other D20 games. So, yeah, you can definitely tell that that this ring is cursed, but it's still worth about 1,200 pieces of eight. And you can do what Guys, we should wrap this up. I just yeah. felt this weird sensation. This thing is, it feels like the one ring. It's got some massive. <laughs> What's the run? What's that? The one ring to roll them all. What? <laughs> yes. Saw Never heard of it. <laughs> let's not well, we touch can give it. that to let's, our enemy. Let's not touch it with our bare hands anymore. That's a good idea. That's a good idea, Zero Ten. So yeah, you have yeah. a cursed ring, Every and anytime time. anyone touches it, they have to make a vigor roll or die. So on your character sheet, Nothray, or whatever you guys want to do. In fact, I'll put it in the party sheet, and then whoever wants it, Nothray, if you want it, feel free to take it. Uh, I'm going to put cursed ring. You know, so that can be useful for someone like Darganeth. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking that would be it. good for Darganus. <laughs> you will be so upset if you just give him that curse ring. Well, we'll wrap it up first. We'll tell him not to open it. You're going to tell him about it, right? Do you... <laughs> oh, <laughs> of course. Here, don't open this. No, we'll, <laughs> tell, we'll, we'll tell him how to use it. Curiosity. Because he could <laughs> plant it like for us if we needed him to. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Or he could offer it as a gift to Yeah. Captain Half John. Captain Half John. Yeah. Oh, a, that's perfect. As yeah, as a good means idea. of of sorry dude. Yeah. As a Yeah, take this as a, as a token, token of, our, of our Yeah. Of our, take a token of, our, of apology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. perfect zero. God damn, yeah. All right, so you guys make it to uh, Kiera, and you get into the the docking area, which is nothing like Brigandy Bay. Everything is nice, neat, and organized. Uh, let's see. Let's have Equius do a a deception check on the orders from Brigandy Bay, because remember, this is an official port. So let's see. I will do a uh, a super roll for our crab companion. God, he's got a good roll. Oh, wow. Yeah, it, it, you definitely are successful with offloading your uh, the timber that uh, you were supposed to bring. So good job. You guys got another... You guys have 8,000 pieces of eight now. And it's a, uh, we'll say that it's a new month and it is time to pay your crew. So you have 19 times 50. Seeing that you are in a port, what is 19 times 50? Uh, like 600 and or 750 or something like that? 818? Yeah, it would be 1850. So, yeah, oof, is it 1850 or what? I'm a, I'm a history uh, major, not a math major. Let me get out my calculator oh, real it- quick. It would be 950, but do the six of uh, our PCs count? Oh, yeah, that's right. So uh, you only have 13 crew members that you have to pay. So 13 times uh, 50, 650. Is 650. It's so 650 is 650. So we'll take 650 out. You'll have uh, 700, 300, uh, 7,350 left. I give everybody so nice. a 25 pieces of eight bonus. Whoa! Oh, he's trying to get them to be super uh, dedicated to the crew. So let's do another, uh, yeah, so another 25. Wow. They are totally happy about that. 
They said, how many days do we have of, of uh, freedom, sir? Well, I guess, what, what is that called in, in uh, America? Liberty. Liberty, there you go, yeah. How many days of liberty are you giving them? Uh, how long do you guys want to spend in Kira? Hmm. Um, is Kira a big port city? Kira has a population of about 48,000. And Kira is built on uh, nine terraces, basically. And this is basically what what the city looks like. Uh, let's see. Actually, let's take a break first, and then we'll come back in, like, uh, how about six minutes at 8.35? And then we'll kind of talk about the different uh, terraces of Kira. How about that? So, um, is there an establishment of that would be uh, that would cater to the sailor at Kara? As in, like, uh, for a jolly good time? Yeah, you know, not necessarily a house of ill repute, but, you know, a tavern yeah. or a place where people can get together and have a beverage or 12 absolutely yeah there's uh there's all kinds of especially down in the dock dust district there's a couple of seedy looking uh bars there's one that's called uh the one-eyed parrot there's one i uh, there's one there uh, but let's, let's kind of talk about kiera a little bit too because as you guys are in Kiera, this is one of the, the largest, well, this is probably the, the largest city on this landmass, probably close to even, probably even one of the largest cities on all of Caribdis, minus maybe Baltimus over on the, the western side of the world. So let's see. Uh, like I said, it's built on nine terraces. You have to have a, a pass to get up to the, the, the highest four terraces. Uh, the top, atop the first terrace, which is the highest, is the Imperial Palace. The second terrace contains all of the government buildings, uh, as well as homes uh, for prestigious individuals uh, like the Admiral of the Fleet, the Great Harbor Master, and the General of the Kieran Army. So yeah, th this place has got it going on. The third tier is home of the town's wealthiest merchants. The British East India Company is here. And the Spanish Guild also maintain offices. There's also a delegation from Little China, which is Daiking, uh, which is on the West Coast. Uh, and they also maintain, and all the, the embassies are basically on the third terrace. The fourth terrace pretty much has all of the rest of the city merchants and bureaucrats. And the public terraces, which the, the fifth terrace uh, this is uh, from the fifth terrace to the ocean dwell the rest of the city's population with prices dropping steadily as one approaches the ocean. The bottom two terraces are now covered in water. The seventh terrace forms a natural sea wall that protects the city from foreign invaders. Though the sea rises towards its, uh, the, the world's flooding, you know what I mean? So let's see, the Kira's ninth terrace uh, flooded in the initial deluge 13 years ago when the, basically when the sea hags were killed and uh, basically threat, you know, promised to, to drown the land and during the great rain, basically. And basically uh, the people fled into the interior. Uh, let's see, uh, a lot of refugees died though because they were turned away. Uh, yeah, they, they, a lot of them drowned, so there's uh, yeah, it was pretty pretty sketchy. But of course, they you know the the upper terraces just couldn't have housed them. Uh, let's see, uh, uh, the eighth terrace, which was the second, but it, it also flooded eight uh, five years after the initial. That was when the sea just continued to rise slowly before before you know Teresa started slowing it down. So over 90% of those who lived in the impoverished level were blocked from moving upward. M most of them drowned as well. Uh, a lot of the, met, the rest of the city, including all of the, the diplomats and the bureaucrats, all basically just turned to uh, 
you know, a blind eye and let them all drown. Pretty much, pr- pretty much what like what happened on the Titanic. So, uh, uh, let's see. A lot of people were put on Kieran cutters, and a lot of uh, the lower tiers relocated to Eumus, Timon, and Bra- Braven. Uh, there is a, a city watch, as you guys have, and this is actually from the Skrillin. You have your uh, your super. He tells you that. The, the town's corrupted guards are pretty much everywhere. So uh, there's a pretty good chance uh, that they'll be corrupt if you run into them. So, yeah. And that's it. So, yeah, there's a there's a, the one-eyed parrot. You can go in and buy everybody drinks. And, you know, you've got your crew you're giving. It uh, depends on how much liberty you're giving them, how much you guys, how long you actually plan on staying here in Kiera. Well, that's 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 one of the things that uh, we were we were waiting to see. Um, I don't particularly like the the one eyed parrot since how that's like a half a parrot and I got a thing against half. <laughs> you kind of think it gets half parrots? Half half Captain Jack Johns, you know, half half anything. I'm a whole kind of guy. Be watchful for one eyed anything. <laughs> The one I yeah, man, the one I I'm not gonna I was, say anything. I was hoping for like a wretched winch or uh, you know something like that. There is a wretched winch there actually. Now that you say that, there is a a, a wretched winch that's in the dock district as well, which uh, is pretty much like... on the seventh you know the seventh tier down. Because remember, you know the first and second tier they flooded, so yeah, there is a a, a wretched but... winch. I think we want to uh, put the crew on Liberty for 72 hours. Uh, oh, and days. I want to put out to the crew, playing to my Hendris of Squandrous, that at 1800 every day at the rich crew for the next 72 hours, the drinks are on me. Whoa, wow. So the, so you're going to be just be smashing. Are, are you going to be smashing the ship funds? Or are you going to be smashing your funds? Or are you going to take a little bit out of the ship funds to have some fun? Yes. Ship funds to have some fun. How much of the ship funds do you want Crew to take out? Fights you hard, got, plays hard. You got a, yeah, you got uh, 7025 in gold, and you got 4350 in gems, too. If, if a crew of 20 people can drink 7,000 worth of gold in three days, those gonna... are my kind of people. <laughs> oh, my God. You're taking 7,000 pieces of eight out of the, of the ship funds? I no, no, it. no. I'm just Squandrous saying if they, can take that, if they can drink that much, wait, wait they're now. my kind of people. How, how much can Lily drink? Are you going to be drinking Shirley Temples, or are you going to be drinking the good stuff? <laughs> oh, I just mean you should probably not include uh, Lily. Well, I, but Shen is going to take a liking to you. Yeah, she's going to OD on candy, though. I like Lily. Lily that's is, between you two to discuss. That, that, I mean, that's that's up to you two. But I know that you know you hide behind Shen all the time. And I would just, as being the game, I would assume that he would probably offer you a drink. Because there's you know no drinking laws or anything yeah, yeah. like that. So there's no drinking laws like that. And if you're going to be a pirate, you got to be able to drink the rums. If, if Lily gets offered a drink, she's going to drink it. I mean, at least the first time. It might take a while for her to learn. <laughs> and then during the rest of the time, we're going to be searching around, investigating the city, gathering information, seeing if we got any more jobs since how now we have three empty cargo holes. Well, there the snow cone guy told us we need to find Grambus Graham here. That is that is correct. And I wouldn't mind a spiked clam juice if they have those. A spiked clam juice? Yeah, you can get a spiked clam juice. Yeah, absolutely. With a squirt of lobster oil? Yeah, now you're thinking, Sean. Now you got to just make that See? noise again. The... <laughs> 
that, that's worth it. Yeah, you're supposed to find uh, the Grambus Gram, right? Yeah, the Harbor, Harbor Master Grambus Gram. Yeah. He's supposed to have some information on Tomas de Arenjo, who knows about the Tears of Lust. Well, yeah, the sun is going down as you are in Kiera now. And, yeah, you find the Grambus Gram. He's there at the at the, uh, the Dockmaster building there in the harbor. And yeah, so I guess Shen, you're going off to drink, right? You're 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 squandering, right? Well, yeah, I put I put the crew on liberty, and uh, eighteen hundred at the wretched witch drinks are on me for the crew. They they said they will all be there, even Mister and Missus Howe. Mister and Missus Howe says, "Oh, I hope they have my Thai cocktails because oh, that's all that we drink, and they better have the little umbrellas too, and the swords with cherries." Uh, I remember that the first time I ever went to Vegas, Vegas, the day after 9-11, by the way. Uh, that was the first time I went to Vegas. And that I said, the la- oh, I was up using a slot machine. She goes, uh-huh, like, what would you like to drink, hon? And I was like, uh, what do you have? I don't drink much, but I said, what do you have that's like kind of fruity and has an umbrella in it? And she says... She just kind of laughed, and she says, oh, it's like my, my Thai cocktail. So she brought me, like, I was fucking sloshed. On my, my, I couldn't even find my room. I was trying to, like, unlock, because it had the, the like, credit cards for the access into your uh, room. And I was, like, using my access card on every single room on the floor until I found my room. I knew that I was on, I knew that I was on, like, the, the sixth floor or something like that. But I was so drunk, I was just going to every room and just trying to open up the door until I found my room. <laughs> I do remember that. That was pretty awesome. Oh, and the German buffet. That was oh, that was unbelievable too. Sorry about that. I digress. So yeah, you find uh, you tell everybody you know drinks on you eighteen hundred every day. Uh, they're there, uh, and Grambus Graham Omi. You, who anybody else going off with Omi to find the Dockmaster or? Yeah, zero's gone. All right, zero. All right, so yeah. you guys go to the dock master, you know, and he's uh he definitely seems like he's 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 well off to do basically. And uh, he introduces himself. He's a Masaquani, so he's like the the Charybdis version of a of a human. He's got all kinds of scars and probably he probably had done some pirating or something back in his younger days. Uh, but you ask him about Tomas and he says no at first and then he kind of looks you guys over and uh, why don't you guys do a why don't you both do a persuasion roll because I'm sure you're probably trying to sweet talk him as well right yeah yep he just kind of shakes his head at you and then he looks over at him and he says, "You hang out with this wizard." He says, "It's a, it's a shame that all you wizards aren't shackled up and and put in behind bars." And then he says, what do you "Yeah." Have with he says, "See my scars? That may tell yeah. you something. A run-in oh, I you... had with one years You're back." A bad mouth, the wizard, huh? You probably deserved it. He did. If you think I turned out rough, you should see what he looks like today. Mm. And then he says, I'll tell you what. Because you give him a, con- a convincing speech there. He says, I'll tell you what. I may have a little bit of information for you, but it, uh, it's going to cost you some pieces of eight. Of course, to the right party, which is going to be me. <laughs> Don't worry about trying to threaten me. Because all of the the members of the City Watch here on the docks are on my payroll. So I, I wouldn't worry about giving me any threats of violence. But if you want the information, what do you think a fair price would be? What do you think, what do you think a fair fee would be for me to give you some information about the valiant in this Tomas. Well, what if I agree to do a spoon show for you? 
A fucking spoon show? What do you... What do you... G- 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 no. Pieces of eight talk oh. and bullshit walks. A spoon <laughs> show. What are you You've talking never seen about? Show though. I don't want to see Omi Barton. If if I want to see any kind of show, I'm gonna go right over here. <laughs> I don't even want to say this name. And he goes, <laughs> "We've got plenty of shows here, plenty of shows in Kiara. There's shows from, and especially since the humans came, there's a bunch of Filipinos that have a bar here called the." called the spitting one eye and uh they have some pretty ridiculous shows and they're involving horses if you could just put two and two together so if you want to show <laughs> go to the spitting one eye <laughs> well i suppose you're gonna want pieces of eight and i can't talk you into the spoon show huh money talks and bullshit walks my friend Sorry, so, not in the spoons. So how much do you want for the this information? I think a thousand is a good fee. Uh, I th- I think a thousand is a great fee to to find out more about this uh, this ship, the Valiant, its captain, its its crew, and this uh, Tomas that you're uh, looking for. I, I think I could. I think I could really help you out for a thousand pieces of eight. Which usually, I, I kind of like this wizard here. I kind of have a little bit of sympathy for him. So usually I charge anywhere between three and five thousand pieces of eight. So you're kind of kind of lucky there. I feel lucky. Just by staying up. A thousand pieces of eight. That's a lot of money. Sure you wouldn't take like five hundred? Give me a uh, give me a persuasion roll. <clears throat> he says, "I will not. I will not take a thousand p. I will not take five hundred. Well, what? How about five hundred in the spoon show I was talking about? I'll use a Benny to re-roll that. <laughs> All right." I'll tell you what, I don't want the damn spoon show, but give me seven fifty, and I'll give you all the information you're looking for. That's, all that's, right, that's it's, my final it, offer. It's a deal. I'll hold out a tentacle. <laughs> he grabs your tentacle in the menagerie, and you two. He he take never mind. Uh yes, you you uh you whoa. agree on the whoa. Whoa, spoilers, they <laughs> Japanese flashbacks. <laughs> so yes, you said menagerie. <laughs> yeah, I said menagerie. I'm sorry. That's where all the magic happens. I mean with a tentacle. Tentacles and menagerie. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so, so I assume we can find you here. To find you here tomorrow. I will. I will be here. I, I work every day. I'm a I'm a hard working man, Omi Barton. As he's leaning back in his chair, you know, his looks like brand new shoes that he's never worn before ever kicked up on the on the desk. And this is if you want the information, come back tomorrow and I'll have everything for you. All right, I'll get the money together and we'll be back tomorrow. All right. That would be a good move. Nasty things could happen to ships in my harbor, unfortunately. <laughs> Not a good plan. Uh, so, yeah, you strike a deal with uh, with this Grambus Graham, Omi Barton. Not for the full thousand, but you get the you get the reduced price of seven fifty. Not too bad. All right, and I think. Uh... Zero, if you want to, we should uh, head back to uh, the wretched wench and meet up with Shen. Because it's 1,800 hours as you walk into the door. Yeah. Should have got a big guy. Party, party, party. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. No. Well, he's probably got work. Yeah, probably. So, yeah, they set up a, they set up a couple of 
very long tables for you, Captain Shen, and you know uh, they give you a, like a, a room off into the back of the of the tavern. So are you buying? Are you just buying drinks for the crew, or are you buying drinks for the entire wretched wench? No, just the crew. All right. So you have nineteen, and Omi has to do a show. <laughs> Oh god! There's a stage there on in the room. Actually, there's a little stage off into the corner. So it would be basically it's going to be like a piece of eight per drink, uh, and it's for the you know the best stuff. And so it'll be nineteen nineteen gold per round or eighteen with Lily because you know they'll give her Shirley Temples. But if you know if she wants to drink the good stuff, she can drink the good stuff with you guys too. Would you, Would you like your first? Kira, iced tea. Uh, Kira. Lily thirsty. What's some iced tea? Yeah, yeah. Lily needs a Kira iced tea. All right, they bring her one. So, nineteen. How many rounds are you buying for everybody, uh, Captain Shen? And I'll take that out of the. Uh, and I figure what another gold for a tip. So you figure twenty gold around. Keep yeah, it easy on the math. Also, right, so Lily, many? Lily over here, something in the bar. And so she what? pops her doll up and animates the doll. What's the sex on the beach? <laughs> <laughs> the waiter oh, no, the waiter really. <laughs> The waiter says, Oh no, honey. The sex on the beach is not for you yet. You need to age a few more years. <laughs> but why? Oh honey. You need to learn about the birds and the bees, and I am not your father, so you need to talk to your father about that. And, but I, I would probably do it in a couple of years. But L- Lily's had honey before. Yeah, but that's not sex on the bees, honey. <laughs> oh, my God, we're going in ERP. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> sex on the beach, oh, my God. That's where people... They like each other and they make babies. Whoa! Spoilers. So, <laughs> well, you asked, you asked, little one. <laughs> All right. So, how many rounds are you going to be buying there at eighteen hundred, there, Captain Shen? Uh, I don't. You said twenty per round, right? Yeah, that's with the tip. Yeah. I figure, yeah. So Lily's going to spend the next few years confused on how people drink something and make babies. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> That's how it works. <laughs> Something's in the water. Omi's going to do a show as well. Oh, yeah. Omi's going to go up and see if there's a, a, a tuba player or an accordion player who could accompany him. There just happens to be a tuba player and an organ player uh, in the audience. Actually, uh, Wee Willie plays the tuba, and Tyr plays the organ. I think organ. he plays the organ. Well, we have, well, vice versa. <laughs> yeah, T- Tyr can play the tuba, and he plays the organ. As long as ain't nobody playing the skin flute, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> well, since Shen's buying, I'm g- buying. I'm going to take requests from Shen all night. Whatever, like, sea shanties or sailing songs he wants to hear all night and I'll direct the tuba player and the uh, accordion player to play along with me <laughs> nice. yeah, I'll get out the spoons I'll have one spoon in each one spoon in each tentacle and then I'll take put a couple more spoons in my mouth tentacles and be playing those too so I'll have like four sets of spoons going at the same time you were taking the spooning to a whole nother level Omi Barton <laughs> You're going to be yeah, your own new, one-man band now. Yeah, this new body's great. I can hold four pairs of spoons now. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm thinking like 250 pieces of eight worth Whoa, whoa. So that's 750. Oh, my gosh. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Holy cow. Yeah. So Squandrous. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're all pounding our flasks on the table, and we're all like saying great praises to our captain. Here, 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 captain! Wow, so you are you are getting everybody sloshed. I like that. Argonaut's probably wondering how he's going to uh, make up for all this now. <laughs> <laughs> he's out scoping out another ship. 
I risk my life for you to squander all this goddamn money away. I can, I can <laughs> right. see it now. Yeah, I figure there's seven thousand. There's six of us. I got to pay the crew, so that leaves me. Well, the crew's paid for a month. A yeah, the crew's yeah, paid. Yeah. So I'm yeah. spending my money, not the not the ship's money. So there's seven thousand pieces of eight on the ship. There's six of us. That's a thousand plus a piece. So seven fifty out of my money. Yeah. Wow, no, I like it. Oh my goodness! Can't, can't count Lily in there. Mm -hmm. Just keep her fed and watered and and plenty of candy. Fed and yeah. watered, sort of. Oh, and there's a Lily there's can a have all the candy she wants. Yeah, there's a candy store here too. Everything, just wall to wall candy. All these little, like these, uh, sort of like going into one of those variety candy stores where there's just like these plastic troughs everywhere where you lift up the lid and take the plastic tongs that are attached to the bungee cord and you just go in and get you what you want out gummy bears or gummy worms or hard candies or whatever oh yeah there's oh okay yeah. she's going to be laid up with a sugar coma soon <laughs> runts will be everywhere <laughs> so you guys have a good old time Omi does his show uh, do you guys want to yep. do anything else for the three days I, I believe that you guys wanted to try to take on some more cargo oh yes, I'll make sure I some more jobs Sure. I'll make sure I fit in the polka verse, polka spoon version of Under the Sea. <laughs> what, I watched, why don't we... I watched uh, Deadpool tonight. Can you do Fila? Can you hear me from Yentl? <laughs> <laughs> why don't we go ahead and end for tonight, guys? And then when we come back, uh, Omi can actually have a little video or song or something like that of his of his show i'm sure he'll find something really good <laughs> <laughs> you're opening the door dave <laughs> i am i am opening pandora's box so yes make sure it's wretched winch appropriate yeah well, he knows he's not asking dirt oh god thank god i'm not asking big dirt i well <laughs> i wouldn't ask big dirt that anyway so you wouldn't have to worry about me asking him that so you guys are partying. Eighteen hundred. You should just rename it the eighteen hundred club. I mean, might as well just rename it the eighteen hundred club. So we'll go ahead and we'll end it for tonight, and uh, we will. I'm going. To, I'm leaving Monday night, guys. So I don't. I don't have a definitive date for our next meeting. So we may have to go the last two weeks of the month. So. Uh, but by then, there could be some more changes with uh, Pathfinder as well. Uh, so we could probably do the first adventure of Pathfinder if you guys wanted to do that too. So of the new playtest. So and then we'll and then periodically we'll just do all the other adventures too because they're different level ranges. There's like a level one, level four, seven, nine, thirteen. So we'll. Uh, Definitely try those adventures too. So and do the feedback. We'll have a question go. about tomorrow. Sure. Mm -hmm. Are you going to be streaming that? I do not know uh, yet, but the Starfinder game is going to happen. But unfortunately, the Paizo website's down, and I. Oh, you can't tell if it's released or not. I can't tell if it's released or not. Usually, I will get an email. I did get the initial email about a week ago saying that. Uh, my two subscriptions for this month, the Pathfinder Map Pack and also the uh, Starfinder uh, Adventure Path was char was said it's going to be charged, but it hasn't been charged yet. I think it might be because of the websites down because everything is done through their website. So, right. But if I get charged tomorrow, then yes, uh, I will go ahead and we will we will stream it live. If not... What about the YouTube record. videos from the previous two that's ready to go? It's ready to go. Yeah, part one is in three parts already, and uh, I just I haven't posted it yet simply because it hasn't been officially released. Right. So okay. and I I don't want to get in trouble for doing that. So but yeah, it's it's definitely going to be there. Uh, the 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 party did a great job in the first adventure, and uh, we'll, we're definitely playing tomorrow. But I, I just don't know if it's going to be online. So. Our first game of uh, Pathfinder, will we be uh, spending that doing character creation? No, I figure we'll do that off offline, uh, and and I'll because I I don't want to waste yeah. the whole 
a whole session of talking about character creation and stuff. I would just rather go right into the adventure. So, uh, but the PDF is still downloadable, even though the Paizo website's down, Mothray. So if you need the PDF, you can just go to paizo.com, download it. Yeah, I got it all. So should we just create first level characters or what should we do? Yeah, that, well, that well, yeah. Well, let me say we can meet up maybe next week or week after, you know, we can meet up privately. Yeah, we could do like two Fridays from oh, today that we would normally mm-hmm. meet up. We could meet up just to talk about the game and what kind of characters we want. I'm actually out of town that weekend, so it works out that Dave's not going to be back. So, But I can meet up with you guys another time. Right on. Also, I feel like being sassy again, so I'm going to bring back Trinkets, if that's oh, okay. Oh, yeah, Trinkets the Rogue. Nice. Oh, yeah, we're supposed to ask. out playing Lily. Yeah. We're supposed to ask you how much XP for this session. Uh, let's go with a great session. You guys got three, two weeks in a row, so let's go two this time. So yeah, it'll be level one uh, for it, it's a level one adventure. The first one, so it's basic. The first, the first dungeon is a, a pretty big dungeon delve, so that'll be pretty fun. And then after that, we'll we'll level up the characters to level four, and then you guys can do the level four adventure. Then we'll go to the level seven, the level nine, and and I'm sure they're going to put out more adventures too. So I'm I'm sure. And I was also thinking about well, actually, I'm I'm going to do this. I'm going to convert Under Mountain to Pathfinder 2L. So I think oh, nice. I, think, I think Pathfinder would would be fun to I play. I heard that yesterday. Yeah. Oh, did you hear it? Yeah. Did you hear me say it? Yeah. I'm yeah, definitely going to convert. That, it. You said that right after I came into your stream yesterday. Did you? Yeah. I'm going to be converting that. So I think because I I really like it, man. I, I I really do, and I'm not a big Pathfinder fan, but I like the action system. I like the resonance point system. I I like the way the classes are set up. I just I, I think the game's seriously solid. I really do. It, it's. It's just got enough crunch to where it's not 3.5 crunch. I mean, how Plus, everything's it? fun when it's new, anyway. Yeah, yeah. So let, let's uh, let's do it, man. We'll we'll uh, we'll do. We'll, we're gonna play both. Why not? What the hell? Shake Sounds it up. Good. So, all right, y'all. All right. I will. Uh, I'll see you guys when I get back. Sorry, I'm not going to Ohio, Dyer. And I was hoping. I was hoping. Uh, I could uh, meet you in town there. Yeah, that's all right. We'll kind of, you're in Ohio, Darren? Yeah, I live in Mount Vernon. Yeah, that's where I was born, Mount Vernon, Ohio. Home of the town where there's one road in, you go around the town one circle, and one road right back out the same way you went in. So, I'm from Marion, Ohio, originally. Yeah. I don't know Originally's where Marion is. It's north of Columbus. Yeah. Like, uh, so like I'm a, originally from Columbus. Okay. I moved up here. Columbus is what about an hour from Mount Vernon? Maybe a little, yeah, a little longer. Fifty-eight miles, I think. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, uh, Mount Vernon is not very far from where I'm from. Okay. It's in the I, middle, you know. I remember the last time that I was driving to Ohio to bury my grandmother. Uh, I remember a town called driving right, right through. It said Centersburg, and there was a whole. Yeah. There was a big sign that said, Welcome to the exact center of the state of Ohio. And I was like, Oh, that's pretty cool. I've never seen that in a state before. So I remember seeing Centersburg, but yeah. But I but man, when I when I went there last time, dude, I got so sick from eating all those berries out in my cousins. Mm-hmm. He's got this uh like grove of nothing but blackberries and raspberry and they're all seedless man and that's why cool. i just kept mash smashing them, man I, oh man i i was so sick dude i was throwing up fucking berries all over the place we've been selling a lot of blackberry shakes oh yeah you guys uh, you guys probably use like fresh berries too right oh yeah everything's yeah. fresh it's my mom says the Amish make the best clothes soap ever. <laughs> I'm like, wow, fucking clothes soap. I was like, what about all the other food and stuff? My mom says ever the tomato. Well, I remember the tomatoes were huge up there, man. They were like twice or three sizes the size of the tomatoes that we have had in Florida. I was like, wow, this is crazy. And my parents would like just buy just like tons and tons of vegetables, and I'm like, 
the shit would like shit went bad before you know before we could yeah. eat it all i'm like oh man but uh, a bunch of zucchinis getting rotten right now Oh uh, really? Are they? I mean, are they? This still... lady keeps giving me zucchinis. Yeah, they're good. Just she keeps giving me zucchini, like three a day. I was like, I can't eat all this zucchini, lady. You know, <sighs> I take it. You 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 eat them? Yeah. I love zucchini squash. I love. I zucchini fried them up. Right? I uh, I bread them with uh, cornmeal and then I fry them, deep fry them. It's sort of like uh, deep fried uh, green tomatoes. <sighs> it's, but zucchini, it's so great. Yeah. Mm. all right guys so i'm heading out monday i probably won't be back till the following monday and then once i get everything hopefully i'll be able to move in by then if not uh my mother and i will be living here in this cramped little one bedroom place that i have until you know so i'm hoping it'll be ready so all right everybody i, I appreciate you guys uh tonight was fun got a lot done got a couple combat done, a bunch of exploration a bunch of traveling wow Savage Worlds is good for that. So, all right, everybody. Great drinking. Yeah. Right, be safe. Drive safe. I will, and I'll uh, I'll see you guys when I get back, and we'll uh, we'll set up a couple of dates for next month. So, all right. Thanks, travels. Yep. I'll see you Bye. guys. See you guys later. Bye.